check out my latest invention. I call it the density compass. It uses the property of magnetism, density, and immiscible fluids in order to point towards magnetic north. And so what I have here is a bulb flask. And I'm gonna take this bulb flask and fill it halfway full of just regular water. On top of that water, I'm going to add some mineral oil. So now we have a layer of water on the bottom and oil on the top. These fluids are immiscible, they don't mix, and the water is more dense than the oil. And so I'm gonna add some food coloring here. Really interesting how this looks. Check out how the food coloring acts, reacts when it passes through the oil. So for a compass needle, what I've done is I've taken a sewing needle and I've magnetized it by letting it sit on top of a magnet for three days. The arrows of the needle are styrofoam from a styrofoam cup. They've been cut into triangles and so this magnetic arrow right here is going to point north and south. So if the force of buoyancy is balanced, this needle should sink through the oil but float on top of the water. So let me drop it in there and let's see what it does. This looks good. The needle is floating on top of the water but sinking in the oil and so it rests in between the two immiscible fluids. Interesting to note that this magnetic needle won't work inside the house or inside of a vehicle because there's so much magnetism inside of, of our electronics that it's, it's never pointed the right way. And in order to make it look super cool, I'm going to top this off with a layer of alcohol and red food coloring. And so if I do this right, it should float. Pretty neat, it's a triple layer, red, white, and blue density compass. Look at that. All right, so it's time for me to check out my new invention, my compass. This road runs east and west. So I'm gonna take my compass, gonna walk into the woods, get turned around, get completely lost, and see if I can find my way back down to this road. All right, so right now, this needle is turning to face north and south, and I know that this way will take me back to the road, which runs east and west. So it looks like the needle has found magnetic north. There's a negative correlation between the amount of apps a person uses and their aptitude in life, meaning the more apps you rely on, to live your life, the less proficient you are. Now this doesn't apply to older people because older people are already established and when they use apps, it's just an efficient use of technology to get things done. The danger is when young people become over-reliant on apps because if you have an app to do grammar and an app to do math and an app to navigate and an app to communicate and an app for, for everything, then you become reliant on that technology. And when it comes time to work something out that doesn't have an app, then the individual just is clueless.
And so there's no app for relationships and there's no app for raising a two-year-old or or dealing with a tyrant boss, or dealing with a difficult spouse, or thinking your way out of a troubling situation, or identifying who you are, and where you're going, and how you're going to get there, and what you believe in, and why. And so, a person in that world doesn't have the neural wiring to figure things out. Or at least it's hard. Because when you go to deal with something that doesn't have an app, it's too hard. And so, in the face of that, the person usually just defaults to just swiping at more apps. And so since things in life go unattended, then the, the individual becomes, becomes lost. And they don't know what to do, and they, they walk around with a, a level of a free-floating anxiety, which surrounds them all the time because they don't know who they are, and they don't know where they're going, and they don't know what, what they believe in because they have spent their whole life just swiping on apps. There's a lot of people that don't have a compass. They, they don't know what direction is. They don't know right or wrong or, or even how to interpret what might be right or wrong. They don't have a north and south. And so the antidote, the antidote for that, of course, is reading, writing, arithmetic, and playing, and tinkering. And so if, if young people do that, then they will develop the, <clears throat> the capability, the mental capability, to work things out and to think their way through situations. And, and if you have that ability, then you will have the ability to get yourself unlost. And so that's what we're doing now. Without this compass, I would not know where to go. I'd have to sit and look at the sky for a long time and try to think about which way is north based on which way the planes are flying. I think Chicago's that way, I don't know. But I'm gonna use my compass, let's go. So there's the road right there. And so we made it. <laughs> Homemade compass points north and south and uh, you could use it.